Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, back, back. Steve Ren is easy. I'm the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. What's the odds with Steve Ren is easy? Just me and Brett this week for the podcast, July 14th, 2022. Um, I am actually on my way to San Francisco tonight to be at uh, Cobbs this weekend. So that's going to be two shows tomorrow, two shows Saturday. Plug out the gate right away, and, dude. And Lucas is not with us because he's going to Austin. He'll be at the Vulcan Gas Company uh, this weekend. Boom. You can't even avoid it. Even if you like, were like, fuck it, I'm not listening. You already got it. So mm-hmm. that's it. And if you live in San Fran or you live in uh, Austin, you deal with a lot of homelessness. And that's what Lucas and I will be dealing with this weekend. As we, I'm bringing the whole family, dude. And I, from what I have them prepared for like Grand Theft Auto. We were there Mother's Day weekend 2019 before COVID and before you started hearing horror stories. So I'm interested to see what it's going to be like. Look, I love San Francisco. And usually, you know, the walk from the hotel to the club was always fucking awesome. It's the perfect length. It's like a 10-minute walk. But I don't know if I'm going to do it tomorrow night. I might do it on the way there. It's still probably sunlight, like 7.30-ish. Yeah. But, you know, on the way home, it might be a fucking Uber. I don't know. I don't know. But, and plus, it's hilly. And I'm really tired, dude. (laughs) Um, <laughs> and I'm old. Well, have I you played... have you prepared them for the smell of pee? Because that city, more than any other city I've ever been to, it's the 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 scent of urine on the streets. Pasadena That's when I got would... pretty wild at the end, like towards our last couple of years. It's not the, like the Pasadena. COVID. I mean, but yeah, no, not at all. And I think it's going to be a real awakening. A real, and I'm not even sure if piss might be our biggest fear. I'm talking about like stepping in human feces, yeah. which is what I've heard. You know, and it's like, it, what's cool is like, at least you don't have to pay anything for anything like Target or CVS or anything like that. You just go in, you get your shit, you walk out. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. You know, they've, they've streamlined that system, but like getting in and out, stepping over piles of shit, is it worth it? I don't know. Um, so, you know. We'll see. Uh, but I'm looking forward to going out there. And then I'm going out for a couple of days, meeting some friends by the water up there. So it should be nice. But I am tired. I played 27 holes of golf yesterday. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I played with my buddy Lou and his member guest at his club. And the format was one I hadn't played before. It was uh, called a Pinehurst modified thing. So we're two-man teams. We're playing against another two-man team for nine holes. And there's three nine-hole matches, so 27 holes. And then the playoffs. Uh, Spoiler alert, I only played 27 holes. So so, um, my buddy Lou and I, we were a team. He's a member there. And uh, we played together a a couple times before. So we were like, all right, we're we're pretty good together. So... um, it's a blended handicap. I can't, I mean, it's like a thing where, you know, he's a, he's a 14, I'm at six and a half and it's like, they mix it together. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. So then you're basically in a four team flight. That's your flight. That's a, your division, right? You got to fucking, you're playing each one of the teams in your division. The top team in your division moves on to the playoffs. Uh, we were technically ranked the number one seed in, just based on handicaps, but it was like by one tenth of a point. So it was a very evenly matched fucking flight uh um our first nine were against uh two men that were over 65 one was like 68 and one was like 70 and um you know look i had never i i i'm not playing for blood i'm not a fucking member there i don't want to kill anyone i think we were up we were uh we were even and or we know we were up a point or up a hole, and this guy had a three-footer to tie us, right? And this 70-year-old man blasted this three-footer past the hole four feet, right? And now he had a pretty dicey putt, but before it even the ball even stopped, I had made the decision. I'm like, that's good. Pick it up. We'll half the hole. We'll move on. 
right? My partner's like, dude, we walk back to the car. He's like, dude, we just gave away half a point. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, these guys are old. We're up a point. I think we're going to beat them. So, you know, we'll move on. And we ended up beating them by uh, a hole. So we got an extra point. So that mm-hmm. worked out. We, we, you know, we did well against them. And you got some good then, karma going. Well, the, the other part was that the next, because I, I, that's what I said. I go, well, the, the next putt that's even questionable, he'll definitely give to us. The guy never gave us a putt for the entire fucking rest of the round. <laughs> 12, 11 inches I had to put this thing in. 11 inches, Brendan. That's your height. And I'm yeah. getting this fuck. I have to put this thing out. So whatever. It was fine. Uh, then we play our second match. And we played less. I didn't, I didn't play nearly as well. I missed some. I had some good drives, but not. My chipping was a little suspect. I had some great chips in the first match. Great sand shots. I almost hold out a couple of times from the sand. So. Short game was great. Second second nine, not as much. So we lost our second match, which we really we it was very evenly matched and we probably should have won. Our third match after no, then we go to lunch. Then they ply you with hamburgers and hot dogs and pulled pork sandwiches and every beer you can possibly imagine, right? And so I'm like drinking water, hydrating. It's 94 degrees. I've go, I I've got another nine holes to play, and this is it. Like if we beat these guys. Who these guys are two and zero. Oh. They beat the old guys and they beat the guys we just played. Mm-hmm. So they're the top seed coming into this thing right now. And so we gotta at least we gotta beat them to be able to to make the playoffs. We gotta beat them by more. Yeah, we have to beat them to make the playoffs. And I'm eating hot dogs. I'm eating hamburgers because <laughs> I'm hungry, dude. And yeah, you know, I saw Tiger eat a fucking sausage at the turn the other day. And so I'm like, you know, carving yeah, up. It's, where did he finish? He was a practice round. <laughs> <laughs> so two Stellas, 94 degrees, and a, a sausage and a hamburger later, I'm, a, I'm ready to go back to my car. Because <laughs> we now have 45 minutes before the, uh, <laughs> before the, uh, the next, like, match. And uh, I'm ready for a fucking nap, dude. I'm, I'm in my car. The air conditioning's going. Cause it's hot out. It's 94 degrees. And so yeah. you were like, get, and I'm like, and now it's like, all right, I got 15 minutes. Let me go warm up. I get out of the car. My arms immediately feel like they're fucking bricks. Right. I take a couple swings. I can't get the ball off the tee. I'm like, fuck it. Let's go putt. Now my hands, I'm, I'm hitting putts five feet past the hole. I'm like, this isn't going to be good. We get to the final. It, this is, this is basically a 50-year-old man who's a really good ex-hockey player who can still hit the ball well, and a 27-year-old kid who fucking mashes the ball. That's who we're up against. And I can hit the ball pretty long and pretty straight when it goes straight. My buddy Lou's pretty steady Eddie. That's why we're good together. So he goes first. He hits a safe one. If he hits a safe one, then I go fucking bomb one out there and try to bomb one out there. And how the, 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 the match works is I hit a tee shot, and he hit the tee shot, right? Then we go to each other's ball. He goes to my ball and I go to his ball and we hit our next balls into the green. And then we pick whichever one we want to play and we do alternate shot in and the best. And that's your score. So that's how the match works. So it was pretty, you have to go back and forth. Well, with these guys, they went up, they immediately beat us on the first hole, immediately beat us on the first hole. And I was like, we can't buckle now. We tie them on the second hole, tie them on the third hole. The fourth hole, they fuck up, right? Mm-hmm. And we now, we do not take advantage. We have a birdie putt and we three putt and we end up tying, right? So we're like, and we have the hole. I'm like, fuck. The next hole, we took advantage and we beat them. So now we're even. So we have two, two holes left, right? We get to the second to last hole. They are... In the bunker, we are a 15-footer for birdie, right? They chip out of the bunker. And the guy puts it to 25 feet. So now I'm like, great, right? He's hitting three. I'm hitting two. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm hitting three. We were lying three. They're lying two. Now they have a 25-footer. We have a 10-footer. This guy buries his 25-footer Ugh. for par. <laughs> and I lip out the fucking 10-footer. Mm. And so now we're down a hole. We go into the last hole. We go into the last hole and we tied them. So we ended up losing to them. We didn't make the playoffs. I played 27 holes and I almost vomited up pork sausage. 
when I missed the fucking 10 footer. I almost did, dude. It was like, it was just too much. It was, I didn't plan my body well, I don't think, you know, in hindsight, I could have planned my body a little bit better. We've been doing this I podcast tried, a while. I don't think you've ever planned your body well. I Sounds like you're, you're always on the cusp of greatness and then <laughs> three or four pork sausages get in the way and six beers later, you're like, ah, fuck it. You know, yeah, that's what I have to avoid. Those like little hiccups, you know. But other than that, we had a great fucking time and we'll do it again, dude. Oh, that's good. Oh, you know, you know what the best part is? Here, they had a gambling aspect. Here's the best part. So you can go, right? And, and like, because I had a breakfast too. They had breakfast sausage. I didn't mm-hmm. tell you about the breakfast sausage. So we had a little bit of that too. Little <laughs> eggs, little breakfast sausage. <laughs> so uh, they, you could gamble. They had odds on every team, right? So you could like, say you were a member there, right? And you were like, oh, fucking Brenton sucks. His team is playing fucking uh, Lucas's team. He's going to lose. I could bet $10 on Lucas's team. And they had a whole fucking system there where you, the lady was taking the bets and everything like that. How much you bet exactly this and that. And, the, and it was amazing. Of course, so we were, bet on what ourselves were the odds? to win. Yeah, what were the odds on your team? To win the whole thing? We're like 17 to 1. I bet $10. That's and we bad. lost them immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, that's – it was really fun. The format was fun. The setup was fun. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I would just probably avoid the pork. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Um, and uh, now I'm watching the, uh, the Open, the 150th Open, which is – that's what it is. You know that, right? It's the, the British golf, Open, the Open. Yeah. yeah. It's not – yep, it happens the one in, in Britain. Well, so it's, it's really British in Scotland. Open. This year it's, it's, it's Royal St. Andrews. They're still golf part of the club. crown. The birthplace of golf, Brenton. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Old Tom Morris took his fo- first stroke in the Open Championship. Well, not the Open because it's only 150. But old Tom Morris took his first stroke at this golf club three weeks before Lincoln was fucking president of the United States. It's pretty wild. Think about that, dude. The first Clara Jug was given out three weeks before Lincoln was elected president. So it's crazy. This grass is crazy. The thing, there's no trees. It's just open and the wind and it's humps and it's giant bunkers, dude. These bunkers, Brenton, you cannot see out of them. They are holes in the ground that are higher, way higher than you. You would, you would need three Brentons. That's how they judge these bunkers. Well, how do you Brenton. get out of them? Well, you're, for you, you would have to I'd die. be stuck forever. Yeah, your caddy would have to hand you down the rake and pull you up, right? And they would drop you sometimes for laughs and giggles. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for the most part, for your safety, they'd pull that you up. That would make the golf more entertaining. That's why people tune in. Exactly. But, you, I mean, but... It, you, if you're right up against the lip of the bunker, there's no. You have to go backwards out of it. It's in, it's incredible. So uh, mm-hmm. it's it's a golf course that's never been changed. There is no architect. It's the only golf course credited with no architect. Do you know why? Because it was this was just the land that was here. Yeah. So if you that's believe cool. in God, God was the architect. You know. So it's insane. It's the home of golf, um, and it's one day I hope to get to play there one day you know you gotta hit it's cool because like it's the people like people live like you could see buildings and shit like old buildings that look like castles or like apartment buildings and on the 17th hole you have to hit over a hotel you have to hit over the corner of the hotel that everybody stays at to the actual hole the hole you cannot see because there's a hotel in the middle of the way (laughs) And, and that's the way it is you know um tiger did not start off well today spoiler alert for people you know they'll watch he probably when you're listening to this chances are he might not make the cut he double bogeyed one because his tee shot landed which is a beautiful drive landed in a divot and then he tried to get out of that and he hit it into the water and fucking double bogey and not great after that so but i made picks how are they doing i made Right now on DraftKings, let me pull up my DraftKings. I think I'm doing pretty well. I think I have – where are you, DraftKings? Here we go. 
I was maybe you don't want to look at it because what if you're winning the million right now and it's day one? No, I'm not winning the oh entries. No, I'm I'm in I'm in 125,000th place. Okay. And <laughs> I'll give you my entries, but it doesn't matter because it's already in. So yeah, it's I, locked. I had Dustin Johnson, Terrell Hatton, Tommy Fleetwood, who shot even. Dustin Johnson's minus three. He's done. Oh no, he's through twelve. DeChambeau, I have two. He's minus three. Robert McIntyre, who's fucking Scottish. He was minus four, and then he double bogeyed. So now he's minus two. So everyone's under par, or even, except for my last pick. Oh, no. Except for my last. Not only, not only than Tiger Eldridge. Oh, was. no. You saw him eating the sausage, and you still went with him. Well, I figured our sausage buddies would get along. We'd be fine. <laughs> he's in his car right now. With the AC going. Oh, he's plus six through seven holes. Oh, so God. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> so far, no bueno. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, that's what's happening right now in the world of fucking of Steve. I mean, the golf was great. Oh, also, I haven't seen you guys or talked to you since my birthday, which was great. The fourth was great. Was your fourth good? Yeah, it was good. It wasn't yeah. super eventful, but it was good. Um, that weekend, Jonah actually played. My youngest played for uh, a baseball team. We had it. We're in a tournament. Uh, you know, in a county away, which is you know a forty minute drive. Uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the fourth. Uh, but they ended up winning the championship, and they played great. So that was fun. That was a fun little birthday present on the on the morning of my birthday, watching them win. And then, uh, you know, people at the house. I uh, did ribs. I did four racks of St. Louis ribs on the Traeger, which came out fucking beautiful. Then we had some uh, some you know heroes and some pasta and we did fireworks in my new house in the backyard we found a good spot and they came off amazing it was a 15 minute show beautifully like everyone had a good time we did the right amount of fireworks the neighbors didn't bitch and moan or so they haven't yet and there was no fires we didn't light fire anything we didn't set fire anything i was worried about singes going through uh, a little pergola thing i have of it Everything was fine, Brenton. It all worked out. Good. It was like I had an event planner come and do it. So, um, yeah, that was great. And then Joey Chestnut won the fucking hot dog eating contest. It wasn't but, even close. Well, it was actually very strange. I mean, I watched it later on. I had no idea that someone actually rushed the fucking stage. Yeah. And attacked him in the middle of this. What was – do you do you have more information on this? Because I am in, still in the dark as to what happened here. Uh, well, I watched the broadcast and I think they were able to cut away from it somehow because I don't remember seeing it in the live broadcast. But yeah, some guy wearing a shirt that said, uh, let me pull it up. Because if correct me if I'm wrong, from what I've heard, from what I've heard was that in the middle of it, he literally came up and I think he was trying to attack Joey Chestnut. And from what I understand, some he Joey Chestnut put him in a headlock and continued to eat hot dogs with yeah. his other hand. Yes. And I don't know if... If that's not this, an American hero, I don't know what is. I, I mean, literally. Dude, that's... On, a, on the July 4th, 4th, 4th holiday, to have the hot dog champion eating hot dogs while ha- fist holding a man by his fucking arms, choking him out, dressed in a Darth Vader costume, from what I believe... Unless there was a bald eagle behind him, that's the most American goddamn thing I've ever heard in my life. So this that's guy amazing. was uh, an animal activist. He was uh, protesting against Smithfield Foods, the company exposed for animal cruelty, worker abuse, and pollution that supplies Nathan hot dogs with their hot dogs for the contest. So he had oh a sign. Oh my god! Yeah. No, everyone, nobody. Nobody wants to know what's in hot dogs. And nobody wants to be reminded of it. No. We know what's in hot dogs. Hot dogs. Little dogs that are dead. Little baby dogs. And other yes. parts. Yeah, it's gross, dude. No need to remind us. But good for that guy. And I apparently Vegas, some people suspended book. Like, you're, you got your money back if you bet on it. Because... 
you know, I mean, clearly. I mean, think about it. How could you possibly imagine like Kobe Bryant's trying to fucking get his 80th point and someone comes out of the stands, jumps on his leg while he's taking a jump shot and nobody comes out to say anything like. Yeah. And then no one's like getting the, you know, the book, like the bookies are like, nope, you know, whatever. Like, it's crazy. This guy was trying to go for legendary status and someone attacked. Wow. This, this makes him above legendary status because not only did he dominate again, but now he's got this story. The guy, he's, no one's going to touch him. He's going to just decide to stop. Is he up there? Is he up there with Michael Phelps? Is he up there with, um Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Is he up there with Tiger Woods? I he's mean, definitely in like the level of Kelly Slater. Kelly like, Slater. That's that's goddamn impressive, even though no one really cares about it. Oh. So you're so hold on. I just want to make sure I got this right. You're saying that that, that eating shoving hot dogs down your throat is just as hard if difficult or similar to surfing in the sea with sharks and absolutely drowning eating and, hot dogs is you know. the same as eating waves yeah because think about it i've never seen anyone jump out of the fucking water and attack kelly slater in the middle of a competition and try you. to jump on his fucking board mm-hmm. and try to take him off and i certainly think if they did some fucking PETA person that was like, Kelly Slater punched a shark last week when I tried to bite him. I certainly think if they did, they would be understanding for points to go, hey, man, this guy was in the middle of something. Maybe we should think about how we point this guy. Mm-hmm. Not just continue to judge as is, as if nothing happened to anyone. Where did the nearest guy come in, by the way? The second place guy. Uh, I mean, was it even close? I think he was in the 40s, but let me see what the final tally was What's it was a tap on like it wasn't like, close. i mean obviously continue to go for it, but like is there an age limit to competitive eating like do you get it to a certain point where you just can't do it anymore like your gut just can't like you know like, is there a senior league is there a um <laughs> is there like a competitive like i i don't know i don't remember seeing a lot of oldies in uh in a lot of these competitive you know that's because they all died steve you well, can't eat yeah, 60 that's... hot dogs for years and years and years and not have a long life. Like, uh, let's see. Oh, this is breaking it down minute by minute. Jesus Christ. Where's the, just the final numbers? Uh, it wasn't close. So that was his 15th championship, by the way. In a row. Uh, yes. Uh, no, seventh in a row. And uh, he finished 15 ahead of the second place finisher. 15 ahead. Yeah, so the second place guy had uh, 48. Wow, wow. Well, his numbers are going down, so this could be a thing where it's like, you know, a couple more years. I just don't know, you know. And is there even anyone close to challenging him? Like, who's going to be the next Joey Chestnut? Someone's got to figure out how to eat 15 more hot dogs just to get on the same level. This cannot be hard to fucking figure out, like, or find someone. There has to be someone, like, you know, like, like the Clubber Lang. Yeah, but we've, fucking, we've done it. It's not easy. And we probably Texas only ate, fucking, what, like 12? In a Texas barbecue place, just eating all the leftovers every day. He's like, <laughs> have you heard Jim eats fucking 17 pounds of meat a day? You're like, what? He eats seven, he eats all the leftover meat, the, all the brisket, all the sausage. He eats it all. And you're like, shit. And we got to start training this kid because did someone else see, has to though, step up, dude. Did you see the even grosser up. contest they did after? No. Oh, the lemonade? The lemonade. Is that after? That's after. I did watch that, dude. That guy My scarfed God. that lemonade. And lemonade is hard. Like, think about how much, like, tang it gets on your fucking throat. Yeah. Oh, my God, Tiger. Hold on. Tiger for par at eight. He's plus six. This is not an easy. Oh, thank God. All right. He put it in four footer. Put it in. All right. We're plus six through eight. You're still in it. You just needed to make the cut. Four pars, two bogeys, two double bogeys. That's what I got. That's what I got, Tiger. Two time open champion at fucking St. Andrews. I know. I, I went too hard on him. I said, you know, I thought the one he was training a lot. He spent a lot of time here. Anyway, 
Um, I'm happy for Joey Chestnut. I'm happy that he is. Uh, um, I hope he heals. What was wrong with his leg? Did they ever say? I didn't hear them say, but it just looked like he broke his leg. I'm sure he's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm happy that uh, that these guys uh, that they still do it. But it's wild that they're getting, you know, maybe they have to increase security. Where was security? There were 30 people on the stage not eating hot dogs. They're surrounded by people. It makes no sense that the guy even got close. Because he was obviously, he was all direct, decked out in black, wearing a ski mask. Like he wasn't just a dude that looked like an official walking up there and then went crazy. He was this guy clearly up to trouble. These guys didn't beat him, throw him on that thing, and they just ate him alive. Like yeah. a cannibal. I mean, think about it. It's not much different. If you got you got the right twelve people up there, we had to pick twelve people to eat the human being as quickly as possible and get it all down. Well, you come to the right place. Happy Joey Chestnut's July. the first overall pick. Um, you pick a topic now to talk about, Brenton. I'm tired. Uh, well, I've been doing these uh, teen tour shows. I don't know if you remember really? those that the Improv puts on, and uh, they haven't oh, been going well. Oh my god, dude! The ones of the spoiled kids who go on like. They go halfway around the world. Yeah. I did those shows. You'd be like, where are you going next? Las Vegas. Where were you last week? Hawaii. You're like, what, what is this camp? Yeah. It's Camp Illuminati. Basically. Uh, so I, you know, I, I'd done them when I first moved to LA and they were fine because I looked at their age and they, they were still close enough that we had stuff to talk about. I am so fucking old now. They're, they're literally 12, 12 and 13 year olds. And as a 34 year old with no kids, I have nothing to relate to them. And I had this, you'd be so proud of this girl. I had this honest moment where I was like, I don't know what to talk to you guys about. I can't relate to you with anything. And probably the best heckle against me in my life. She just goes, your height. As oh. a 12 year old. Oh, Brenton. She must watch the podcast. Shout out to Samantha. Yeah. Get it, girl. So, Thank you for, for tuning in. I had oh to be mean. God, and then Cassie has to tell me how I'm being mean to 12-year-olds. And she's like, Steve would know how to handle this. He's got kids. You see how he handled the kids throwing the water balloons at him in his stories? He'd be good at these shows. So I've just been eating dicks and bombing for these children. Let me explain. Let me explain two things to you, Brenton. Why... Don't feel bad about yourself. Number one, if you noticed, my wife had to dub out, she had to put music behind what was actually being said by the parents <laughs> while the water balloons were being thrown at us. <laughs> they were parents that threatened to beat their kids. They were parents that threatened to throw their kids into the pool and not let them come up for air. You know, like things like that. So yeah. when, they, when that happens, you have to dub, you know, fucking fun music over to make it look like we're not being... Now, I was at my buddy's house. He's got a trampoline. The, key, the kids made water balloons. And we we're trying to fucking have dinner up on the deck. And we get assaulted. So that's one... Act. Don't feel like that's what you... That's what happens. And you have to just eat that. The other angle of understanding these kids is that I drove well no i didn't my i played 27 holes of golf my wife had to drive my older son to see the minions yesterday and do you know what they wore to the fucking to the movie theater brenton minion costumes nope a suit i guess the cool thing is to wear a suit to the minions movies uh it's a trend it's going around uh, I can't get my son, I couldn't get him into, barely get him into a suit to my father's funeral. Yet he was actively going through my closet because I, I was like, you don't have a suit? He's like, yeah, I do. And the, like the last suit he wore was to my dad's funeral, which was like fucking two and a half years ago. I'm like, what are you, you've grown humongously since then. So he borrowed a jacket of mine and he wore pants and a tie that was a tie that he wore when he was six years old that came up to mid chest and his two other buddies they wore suits and he wore yellow crocs and apparently there's been kids being kicked out of this movie because they're bringing bananas and wearing suits into it. i go let me tell you something i go do not call me and tell me you were kicked out of this fucking movie for bringing bananas into this thing they're bringing bananas into this movie i don't understand that's exactly what i'm talking about brent I don't understand what's happening. 
Yeah. So if you have if you have to deal with this, I have to well, deal with well, this. How, for how like old middle, is he? Middle, middle, he's, 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 he's what? 13? 13? He's 13. Okay. Yeah. Like I told my mom, who's been a teacher for 40 years, the age group of these kids, and she's like, they're the worst human beings on planet Earth. And that hasn't changed for four decades. I'm lucky because he's a good kid. He's just very strange. I don't understand what he's doing. I don't understand mm-hmm. the minions thing. I don't, I don't, I don't get it at all. Like the TikTok and the, and the Snapchat and a lot. I mean, I, I know what those things are, but well, I we don't. Had, we had a chick at one of the shows. She's literally just on her phone, sitting at the bar yeah. in the lab there. And, and the host was trying to talk to her and they're like, no, you can't talk to Brittany. Don't talk to Brittany. She's famous. And she had like a hundred thousand followers on TikTok and she was too good to be there. No, Brittany needs to, insanity. Brittany needs to go. Uh, she needs to go with. She needs to sell my T-shirts and walk me to and from the hotel this weekend in San Francisco <laughs> to learn about what life is like. That's what Brittany they might. Needs to they do. might be in San Francisco. People on the they go through streets. there, so you you might actually cross Hello? paths. You go through San Francisco. Always so if there. you if you look hard enough, you're gonna find like a bus full of rich kids. I don't want it. I don't want rich kids. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, I'm going to stay, keep my hand right here. This is ridiculous. I live on the Gold Coast. I live where the Great Gatsby book was written about, and yet I can't get Wi-Fi service that it's sufficient. The Great Gatsby was written about the land that I have my house on, and I cannot get Wi-Fi that is good enough and strong enough to continue a podcast for fucking an hour. I mean, is it ridiculous, Brenton? It's a little ridiculous, but keep in mind, at that time, Gatsby only had dial-up. I never read the book. I did see the movie, though. (laughs) (laughs) I did see the Boz Lerman movie. Um, Speaking of movies, have you watched anything that's really good? Because I watched, uh, we finished, um, what the fuck did we finish? Oh, the uh, the one on Amazon, the uh, Terminal List. I watched the pilot the other night. It was pretty good, so I'm going to continue. It. But but you know how Cassie watches things. So we just finished Stranger Things. Now we're rewatching Barry to watch the new season of Barry. That's how far behind I am. We plowed through the Terminal List the day after my birthday, all hungover. You get me a movie, a uh, TV show, whatever. You get me a guy that knows how to kill people that has revenge on his mind and actually makes a physical list of the people he wants to kill, I'm in. It never yeah. goes wrong. Never. Taken. Man on fire. The terminal list. Okay? People with skills that have been fucking wronged, that have John now Wick. made a list. Yes, John Wick got his dog killed. Now and he's going to car. kill Everyone. Everyone must go. Mm -hmm. I'm all into it, dude. And there are ones that are executed better than others, but I'm always good and I'm always satisfied. and I've always come. It's like pizza and sex to me. It's always going to work. I'm never going to be unsatisfied. So, but we did that and now that's done. It's only eight episodes. You're going to love it. Um, And now I'm getting ready for that fucking, um, that Sylvester Stallone series. The one where he plays like the ex-mob guy. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not, uh, I haven't heard of that. No. Yeah. It's um, the, uh, the guy that does Yellowstone. He created it. It's like, I think he's a mob, okay. mob, an old, like retired mobster in somewhere, Arizona or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. That's coming up soon. And then, um, and uh, what's the other one? Fucking the one, oh, that movie with, um, the movie with, um, Ryan Gosling, the Sun Flex. What's that movie where he plays the oh the gray man? The gray yeah, guy. The gray man. That looks good. Sick. It better be good. Did you ever see Pig? Pig? Yeah. P I G? P I G. A movie? So it's a Nicolas Cage movie that came out a few years ago, and it's basically unintentionally a John Wick spoof where uh, these guys steal Nicholas's Kate, his his pig that uh, can find truffles. So they're very, very valuable pigs. They steal his pig and he goes on a rampage to get the pig back. <laughs> it's so, Where is this movie? It's so fucking ridiculous. Uh, it might be on Stars or Showtime or one of those. But it's it's been out I for a few years. 
I have a, uh, a six-hour one of his masterpieces. Oh, just just sip a cocktail and watch Pig. Pig. Um. Yeah. Well, speaking of pigs, let's I, uh, let's get to the Yankees because. Honestly. You're so upset with them. They're the best team in baseball still. Yep. They have a 14 uh, game lead on anyone in their division, which by the way, how often does it happen where every team in a division is above 500 at the midway point? That never happens. Almost never. So Baltimore 10 in a row, and now they're 45 and 44, I think. Yeah. And everyone's so. playing pretty decently. I mean, the, the Blue Jays fired the manager yesterday because they consider themselves underperforming, but they expected to be the Rays last year. So I guess to them, they're underperforming. Yeah. But, you know, we do have, there are, we are, we are coming down to earth. Let's just say that. I feel like we've come down to earth and now we're starting to sink a little bit below what our potential is. Not necessarily saying last night because last night, you know, we got Severino got hurt, but you could tell he wasn't right. He gave up back to back to back home runs on breaking balls that were straight down the middle because he didn't want to throw a fastball Yeah, because I think his arm bothered him. He had shoulder stiffness. Or well, that's what they're saying for right now. You cross your fingers. You hope he's okay. Um, the night before blowing the fucking lead with Clay Holmes, it's like, you know, this guy is – closers will blow games. They're going to blow games. They're going to blow games. But, you know, hold on a second. Jonah! You can mute. Come down here. <laughs> Closers are going to blow games, mm -hmm. okay? But, you know, this guy is not an experienced closer yet, so he doesn't really know the role. You know, he hasn't been rattled yet. Come over here. I have a special guest. Someone else is very pissed. Put this in your ear. We're talking about Clay Holmes and the Yankees, right? By the way, Brenton brought up a good fact. No team, no division has had five teams over 500 at the All-Star game. Ever, was it? I don't know if it's ever, but, I mean, mathematically, think about it. That probably hasn't happened, and if it has, it's very rare. I mean, I, I've, has it ever happened where they finished all five teams above 500 in a division? I don't think that's mathematically possible because you play everybody in your division so much. That's what I would think, too. But, you know. We'll see. I mean, right now it's we're halfway there and it's happening. I don't know if it can continue to happen or, or who divvies out. But the point is, all oh, the division's good, great, right? And the Yankees are still good. But here are the things that worry me. Okay, health. Severino getting hurt. Um, Aaron Hicks is a little danged up. These are not guys that you you know. These are not people that you cannot replace. But and the fact that Houston is now three games behind us yeah. in the loss column. This is the fourth time it's happened at the all-star break. It, or this would be the fifth time if everyone finishes. It's only happened four times uh, since the wild card era. It's, I mean, it's incredibly impressive. And it's never happened uh, where everyone's finished that way. I knew they would come back down to earth. I knew they couldn't play this long, this well for that long. But I, I, I was hoping for a little bit that teams like, this is when you're supposed to get right, you know, like, against these Cincinnati teams and even the Red Sox a little bit, you know, like you're supposed to, you know, be able to kind of coast a little bit to the all-star break with this little mm -hmm. schedule we had right now. And, you know, they're fighting to the 10th inning to win games. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? No. Well, that's what Brenton's saying. They're still playing are you, well, Steve. Are you, I mean, the bullpen last night was excellent. Look, again, if you said to me right now, the all – go ahead. No. You have to speak up a little bit, too. Use your big – Well, because, again, the Reds are a baseball team. They're going to go there to play baseball and try to win games and try to – No, they're going to lose 100 games probably. But they're they... – Yes, but they're going to try to beat the Yankees, and that's the point. So you have to be able to come. Shouldn't we try and beat them? Yes, I think they did. No, they didn't. They sat Aaron Judge. He's got to sit. The guy need you need to sit Aaron Judge. You should be able. But then the next game is going to be. It look they're not. 
And the fact that they're not playing well right now, going give a break. Six Yankees are going to the All Star break, which is crazy. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm happy that Aaron Judge isn't doing the uh, the home run derby, which will happen before. By the way, who do you think wins the home run derby based on who's in it right now? Because we won't do a podcast before. Um, Brent, can you pull up who's in the home run derby? Yeah. I know there's like five guys right now. I know um, Acuna Jr., right? Uh, he's in it. Pete Alonso's in it. Um, he's the two-time champion, right? Um, who else is in it? Don't make this easy. You got to click through six things just to find a list. Come on, MLB. What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I got to view this post on Instagram. Uh, Pete Alonzo, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr., Albert Pujols. Pujols? Yeah. Juan Soto. Oh. Kyle Schwarber. Julio Rodriguez. Jose Ramirez. And it looks like that's it. Uh, and I think if they, if they might add one more, if they add a Gene Carlos Stanton hypothetically who do you think wins yes i think pete alonzo wins that guy's built for this thing that's fine did you see pete alonzo's last year they did the spray chart like where his uh where the the guy that threw to him threw every pitch straight down the middle of the strike zone every single pitch even if you get like two or three pitches that are bad pitches that you can never hit for home runs, that's a wasting of like three or four, five, six seconds. Mm-hmm. This guy threw every pitch. So he had a chance every single time. Yeah, he had a good thrower. So he's going to have the same guy again throwing to him. I'm taking Pete Alonzo. Who you got, Brent? I mean, that's a pretty, uh, pretty convincing argument, but I'm going to go with uh, Schwarber. Oh, really? Good. Good enough. Well, who do you think wins the all-star game? I, I would say. Now. You go first. Oh, you tell me. Oh. Easy. Oh, no, not the American League. Why? In the American League? And you think they'll what? Be Do better in the. Okay, so you think the American League. I'm taking the National League this year. I think it's got to change. I would also go the National League. I think Dodger Stadium is going to play a factor. Yeah. I think there's a couple Dodgers that will really try to show up. I think the National League, it's a National League stadium, Dodger Stadium. There's really no American League feel about it at all. So for some reason, I got the National League this year. Um, Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, Yeah, but again, I'm not nervous. I'm cautiously optimistic. The halfway point, if you told me this would be our record and this is where we'd be. Yeah. be a How can you be days. disappointed at all? I'm not. Best I'm just saying. Baseball. You just seem so defeated. No, Can't I you just, just enjoy the moment? Yeah. If this was happening against um, a better team that, was, that wasn't the Red Sox, if this was happening against Toronto, I'd feel uh, better about it. But the fact that they blew leads to... But Boston's not a terrible team. They have a winning record, and Boston's played New York very tough this whole season. There's been a couple of games where it hasn't been close. So, I mean, to split it in Boston, now you come back to New York this weekend, just take two out of the three and you're good. Yeah. Did you hear that? No. No, because you didn't use your inside voice. Can you talk like... He's too far from the mic. He thinks the Astros end up winning the American League and having the best record. Maybe. I mean, they play in an easier division. And also, the way the Yankees are playing and the way the Astros are playing, three games in the hall. It's very easy to catch up with the team. Oh, what do you know? You're drunk, dude. Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you don't drink. Good enough. Get out of here now. Give me that thing back. Get out. You're done. We got to wrap this thing up. See you later. Peace. What am I supposed to say? Rate and subscribe? What? Oh, get out of here. You know what? <laughs> I'm selling you.
Um, again, I'm not nervous, but I will hit the panic button whenever the fuck I feel like it, Brenton. Okay, no, no, you're you're My a podcast. real New York fan. That's what you guys do. Exactly. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Football? Nothing? What's going uh, on? Well, uh, the elephant in the room. Oh please, Rex Ryan. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, mean, you mean Zach Wilson? Oh yeah, he fucked his mom's friend. That's okay. Yeah, what it is, is okay. What's the deal about this? What is happening here, dude? This is what every good pornography uh, situation is built upon. Mm-hmm. Right? There is going to be a Zach Wilson spoof form if there isn't already one that's up. There's going to be one made this week. Dude, as long as his mom and his mom's friend are fine with it, and probably his mom's friend's husband, uh, you know, well, they're like, they're uh, Mormons, so it's fine. Yes, they all they're built to be fine. They're born with smiles on their face. Mm-hmm. This little girl is just trying to start shit, and her fucking boyfriend's trying to get a name for himself. On the what is he on the Guardians? What does the guy play? The Commanders. Commanders. It's the so commanders. funny. I called, I called them the Guardians too. Talking about it last night. The Commanders. Speaking of the guard. Speaking of the Guardians, I'll be in uh, Cleveland the last weekend of July, the 28th, 29th, and 30th. So Cleveland won't be in town. The Guardians won't be in town that week. But I will. Discussing I everything. My, my parents already got their tickets, so get your tickets. Because if my parents are buying them, that means they're probably going quick. Deshaun Watson, will just, well, he'll, he will be opening for me. We will talk about his zero-game <laughs> suspension. Do you really think he's That's getting right, zero? Cleveland. Well, here's the deal. He told me. He goes – if if everyone if we sell out all five shows they're going to give me zero games and i was like dude well, i'm going to announce it right there so it's the moment they're all five do you sell want to out, see watson or do you want to see jacoby Brissett? yep because that's what you you're getting now baker's gone baker baker's is long gone. gone baker took his dozen and went off to fucking uh to north carolina mm-hmm. yeah. which by the so, way what are they doing they sign PJ Walker. They bring Cam Newton back, who's now a free agent again. They trade for Darnold. They draft they're a guy. Th- they're throwing pasta against the wall, dude. Jesus seeing Christ, the sticks. man. They're going, since Cam Newton, we have not had a quarterback that people really can rely on. Uh, and even since we had Cam Newton the last basically three or four years of Cam Newton. So it's been a while. Yeah. It wasn't like he was a fucking great quarterback up until the day he, you know, he walked out the door. So, you know, they're trying to find anyone, literally any single person. And so Baker Mayfield makes sense. Cleveland's going to pay a decent amount of it. He took a he took a three and a half million dollar pay cut to go try to start. He knows he's got a better shot there. I can't see Sam Darnold winning this job. No, 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 no. I mean, Sam look, Darnold he started off be last year really well, but you know, it's not going to be a thing where he's going to be sitting there, you know three quarters of the way in the season, you know, with a winning record as a starting quarterback. Yeah. I think you'll see a 500 record with Baker Mayfield as the quarterback trying to, you know, sneak him into the playoffs. But, you know, I love the fact that Zach Wilson fucked his mom's friend. That's fine. Let's not get on anyone about that. Yeah. Love is love. Love is love. Oh, your boy, I watched him, by the way, speaking of golf and football. That uh, that Tahoe thing happened this weekend, and your boy Allen was with Mahomes and Kelsey. They were a group. What do you think about that, dude? Can I ask you that? They were a pairing together, and they're fucking chum chum boy boy. They golf together. How does that make you feel? Like I never saw David Ortiz and Derek Jeter hanging out on a boat together in the middle of fucking the off season. Like yeah, this but- is, these are, like that is. I'm That's fine me. with it. I, I think I'm Josh the, is doing it. To get, he wants to figure out who they are as people, and then he's going to feed that information to the defense, and they're going to be able to take him apart. I, I like it. I hope so, dude. I hope you're right, because chances are you're not. Um, just based on, you know, the past and everything you've said before. You know, I just – I don't, I don't think it's like a good – you know, I mean – yeah. I know everything's different in sports now, but for the most part, if I, if I, you know, if I had lost two years in a row to the same team in the playoffs, especially the way I lost last year, I don't know if I want to fucking hang out with those guys all the time. I really wouldn't. 
But well, was you know, it was it very for charity to... or were they just hanging out? No, it's the whole thing for TV, and they're playing basketball together, and they're throwing balls around, taking interviews together. You know, like I, look, thank God they signed that contract, or I'd be worried. I know they can't be on the same team together because they're the same quarterbacks, but yeah, everybody's real happy. So I'm sure it'll all change in a month. Uh, you'll a month be away, dude. happy or shocked or very sad to know that. Uh, so I'm helping my brother with a dynasty football league and I'm obsessed uh-huh. now. I took Daniel Jones. I'm all in. I think the Giants are going to make a huge step forward offensively. I think Jones is finally going to be that guy that you want him to be. I think Dable is going to fix him like he fixed Josh Allen after his rookie season. Not since you chose those players you chose to win the million dollars that day. Have you ever been so right about something? <laughs> Look, man, I, I, I think that, I'm that, offense, optimistic. that offense is going to be exciting. At the very least, it's going to be way more exciting than what you've been watching the last few years. Daniel Jones, we've seen like small little pieces of he does have talent. And he can run, Look, and he's a bigger guy. The bottom guy. line is, it's like if this doesn't work, we just got to fold as a franchise. Honestly. Basically, yeah. So I mean, it's better than just being mediocre forever. It's it's Why all or nothing shoot for the stars. Exactly shoot for the stars. But you yeah. you have good weapons around him. You got a good offensive line. You beefed it up. Barkley's going to be a hundred percent. And even if he isn't, I mean, Dable brings in Matt Breida, who's got good speed. So you have a guy who can kind of mix it up with Barkley and. I think you guys are going to be all right. You're probably defense the second seems- best team in your division. Your defense is is solid. You're probably the second best team right now on paper. I just came in my pants. Yeah. <laughs> you might. You, there's there's an outside chance. I mean, if you're going to put don't money on it, say it. don't even make, say it. Playoffs. Make, don't say it. Playoffs. Play, don't play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that division is really bad. So you can you can take it. You get those players buying into Dable and thinking that he is this uh, football god, and and he might be. Just some meaningful games, dude. Games that like you're like, oh shit, dude! Can you believe I can't wait to see what happens today? Meaningful games, not like after fuck. week five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy! All right, we'll see. But I'm all in Fingers on Daniel Jones. Here. He'll get his leg snapped in week one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that's why I'm going to pick up Tarot as well. That's the podcast for this week. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to ruin my day? I got to no, get out of no, here. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, everyone should go watch uh, Bill Burr live at Red Rocks. All Things Comedy just put that out. And uh, we I got nominated did. for Fantastic. two Emmys. Fuck yes. Congratulations. Yeah, um, big you get to big go. week. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm as low on the totem pole as you can be while still being in the room. All right. Well, you, you're on the pole, dude. And you always will be. Yes. Congratulations. Um, that's the podcast. Go see Lucas. If you're in Austin this weekend, go see me. If you're in San Francisco, go throw things at Brenton. If you see him in Los Angeles, I got teen tour shows this weekend. (laughs) Teen tour shows. You fucking have at it kids. Samantha, you're doing the Lord's work. You make fun of him all you want, all right? If you need any help, DM me, and I will let you know some more stuff I know about him to kind of fucking dig it deeper. So uh, that's the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Rate, subscribe, tell other people. Love you. Talk to you later, bitches. Go Bills. Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back, back, back. Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy.